Welcome back to the podcast, guys. Hope you're doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be looking at the queen of election denying Carrie Lake once again, and specifically how in her zeal to prove that she actually won the election against Katie Hobbs, she might have actually committed a class six felony in Arizona. First, we're going to be looking at a news report that breaks down basically what happened here. Then I'm going to explain to you guys the law that she broke. Then we're going to be talking about the uh, punishment for a class six felony in Arizona. Then lastly, we're going to be talking about what the attorney general should do. The denialism that has existed has been rejected by the American people. Arizona's top elections officer, Democratic Secretary of State Adrian Fontes, has asked Democratic Attorney General Chris Mays to investigate whether Lake broke the law by posting 16 voter signatures in this tweet last week. Fontes said in a statement, It is my responsibility to protect Arizona voters. In keeping with my duties, I have referred this matter to the Attorney General. Fontes's letter to Mays cites Arizona law. Arizona statute is very clear about when and where a voter's signature can be shared or replicated or reproduced. Tammy Patrick is with the National Association of Election Officials. She's worked in Maricopa County and knows Arizona law. The answer to all of those things basically is never and not and it can't be. Patrick's conclusion about Lake's tweet. For anyone to publish a voter's signature without their knowledge, without their consent, um, I'm not an attorney, but when I read the law, it looks to me like that's a felony. Lake has not taken the tweet down. Her lawyer, Tim Lasota, said in a statement that Lake had a First Amendment right to post the signatures. Lasota said Adrian Fontes selectively quotes the statute in an attempt to distort the law and smear Carrie Lake. Chris Mays should immediately say she will have no part in this shameful, disgusting effort. All right. So as you guys heard there from the election expert, she talked about how Carrie Lake definitely broke the law by releasing publicly the private information of these voters, specifically their names and their signatures, which you're not supposed to do under uh, a specific Arizona law, which we're going to be looking at here. Um, Arizona Code 16-168, specifically Section F. If you scroll down on this page, which I'll link this page in the description box so you guys can go look at this yourselves. But if you go to Section F here, they have this entire paragraph explaining um, what can and cannot be released and when it can be released regarding voter information. And I've highlighted the important parts here, but you guys can go read the entire paragraph if you want the context. I am not taking this out of context. As the lawyer for Carrie Lake claimed, the paragraph says exactly what the election expert says. And according to the law here, Carrie Lake broke the law. And as for Carrie Lake's lawyer's ridiculous assertion that the First Amendment somehow protects her post, that is absolutely absurd. Her lawyer, Tim Lasota, said in a statement that Lake had a First Amendment right to post the signatures. These people think that everything is protected by the First Amendment. They literally said that the attack on the Capitol on January 6th was okay because it was a protest and therefore protected by the First Amendment. They're, of course, that's not true. Over a thousand people were arrested for what happened on January 6th because the First Amendment does not protect a violent insurrection on the Capitol. And the same way here, the First Amendment does not protect Kerry Lake from releasing private protected voter information without their permission to the public. Next thing you know, they'll be saying that shooting somebody in the face is also protected by the First Amendment. That's how ridiculous their assertions are regarding how every wrong thing they do is protected by the First Amendment. There may be other arguments that protect her, but the First Amendment does not protect her actions here. There is no exception for any person to release voter data like a voter's email or their signature to the public uh, under Arizona law. So this is what it says. Nothing in this section shall preclude public inspection of voter registration records at the office of the county recorder for the purposes prescribed in this section, except that the month and date of birth, social security number, and a driver's license, and a whole bunch of other things, and birth records, and the records containing a voter's signature, and a voter's email address shall not be accessible or reproduced by any person other than the voter. Okay, so even the county recorder cannot release this information publicly, like the signature, uh, which is what Carrie Lake released. Even they can't release it. They can inspect these uh, documents inside of the auspices of their official office 
it, that's why it specifically says the office of the county register. That's where you can uh, verify the ballots for whatever purpose. If there's any problem in an election, sometimes you have to verify ballots. That's true. And that's why they, the law allows for that. But you can't randomly release because it serves your purpose. The uh, the records of voters like their signature or their uh, date of birth or their birth records or their license or their social security number or date of birth, all this stuff they list here. Uh, including their signature, which they specifically list, and the voter's email. You can't leak any of this stuff publicly. That's exactly what Carrie Lake did. And you're looking at a picture of that on the screen. Uh, I am not going to show the signatures. It's blurred. But nevertheless, this is what she did. She released this publicly as if she owned it. There are two ways in which Carrie Lake can not be guilty here, okay? If she got the permission of the 16 or so people that she released the signatures of, then she's in the clear because the law says that if you got the permission of the voter, then you may be able to release certain records. So she might be safe on that count if she got the permission from these voters. I doubt it. And the second way that she can escape from this is if the signatures are fake and this is some kind of publicity stunt that she did to prove her case about uh, election fraud and that this is not really real signature data from an actual election. If that's the case, then she's also probably safe. Although if she had any honest followers, who care about the facts, she might suffer some uh, reputational damage. If her followers cared about the truth, of course they don't, as we know. If they did, they wouldn't be following Carrie Lake in the first place, okay? I'm, I'm sure there are some misguided souls there and I feel sorry for them, but I don't think they will walk away from Carrie Lake, even if she's exposed as a liar, for trying to prove non-existent election fraud. A lot of the people who are still with Kerry Lake have already convinced themselves that the Democrats only win because of election fraud. They're delusional. They can't be fixed. So whatever. Whatever. Uh, but anyways, those are the two circumstances in which she's safe. But there will have to be an investigation where the attorney general will look into this. She's already been notified about this. The secretary of state sent an official letter as the video showed, uh, notifying the attorney general who was recently elected, Chris Mays. And Chris Mays should certainly look into this and see uh, if any crimes were committed and prosecute them, regardless of the fact that Carrie Lake is a famous person. To be clear, I don't know anything about the recently elected attorney general, Chris Mays. I don't know if she actually believes in law and order or what. I don't know what her record is. So we'll see how she acts on this. All right, so I'm going out of order here. I already talked about what Chris Mays should do. Uh, so let's lastly talk about the class six felony here. So a class six felony is a very low level felony in Arizona. That's the uh, felony class that this law violation falls into. So it's not going to be harsh punishment for her. But nevertheless, even class six felonies do hold some jail time for certain people, specifically people who already have a criminal record. Most likely, Carrie Lake doesn't have a felony record, so she's not going to get the brunt of it. But people who already have a record can get somewhere between four months to 5.75 years in jail for violations of a class six felony. There's a variety of crimes that are included here and the judge will sentence based on the type of crime. But as you guys are seeing on the screen, punishment for class six felony in Arizona depends on the number of prior felony convictions that a person has. People with no prior felonies, which is the first option there, they are probation eligible or they may face four months to two years in prison. That will be completely up to the judge based on the nature of the crimes and how serious the judge takes the case that will determine how much time they get or if they get no time at all some people just get probation for small level violations where there was no violent crime there was not that much harm done to anybody and the judges usually go easy on these people so in this case i would say that carrie lake will most likely walk away with the fine she, but the point is she's going to have a conviction and that's the most important thing for me if it is found that she did commit a crime which i certainly believe that she did here by releasing these records, uh, she will have a felony record, and that's important. But I'll take a felony record even if it doesn't include prison time for Carrie Lake. She certainly deserves it. So if Carrie Lake, for example, has a prior conviction on a felony, then she may face prison time from nine months to 2.75 years. So in that case, there is no probation. She's not probation eligible if she has a prior conviction and two or more prior convictions include prison time from 2.25 years to 5.75 years. So that's the tougher end of the law. If you have existing felonies on your record, more than one, then you're definitely going to get two plus years in prison. So even though it's a low level felony, it still holds prison time. So last thoughts here, like I said before, the uh, prosecutor should look into the case and see what the circumstances are. They will have to investigate to see 
if these are real records in the first place, and also if the voters whose records she released gave her their permission, express permission to release the records, then she's in the clear. She has nothing to worry about because she didn't violate the law. She got permission from the people before she released these documents. Okay, so she may be safe if she did that. So the prosecutors should investigate this. Find out exactly what happened here. Did Carrie Lake actually break the law? If she did, then they should immediately indict her. They should file charges against her and indict her like any other common criminal because no one is above the law in America. Okay, And I hope Chris Mays, the attorney general, believes that in Arizona. Here's to hoping that she does. And that's the bottom line. Thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, hope you guys got something out of this video. And uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, and press all for future videos. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below. You can also join channel memberships. If you want to see all the legal documents that I use in my videos, I provide all of that on Patreon. And you can also see my videos without any ads on Patreon. You can also contact me directly on Patreon and ask me questions about any topic that you want. I'm pretty flexible with my patrons um, and it's a great way to support the show as well because uh, your support will help me become more independent so I can work less with my other jobs and focus more on YouTube. So if you like my content, you want to see more cases covered on this channel, the best way to support the show is to support me on Patreon. The link is down below. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.